What's up guys? Welcome back to my vlog. This is episode four. This is a very special episode. This is the Brad Owen Andrew Nimi meetup game from the Bellagio. I actually had already recorded an intro for this, but I wanted to make sure to let you guys know to stick around to the very end because I got a quick interview with Andrew Nimi afterwards. You're gonna to wanna to stick around for this. I was just able to grab him and uh, get a quick little minute and a half, two minute long interview, ask him some questions about poker vlogging and he was nice enough to chat with me. So make sure you stick around for the end and uh, apologies on the aspect ratio. I recorded it in portrait mode instead of landscape. So sorry about that, but let's get right into it. We're here at the Bellagio. It is 9.30 AM for the Brad Owen Andrew Nimi WPT meetup game. It's a two five and we're supposed to start at 10 AM. There are 100 people on the list, 15 tables expected. So this should be a tough field. Uh, anyone that's playing here certainly is here for a reason, uh, so I expect it to be a much tougher field than we've been facing over at Aria and the Venetian. Would love to get on the vlog, so if we gotta throw a crazy bluff out there against Brad or Andrew, gotta do what we gotta do. So, uh, wish us luck, and uh, they're calling tables now, so let's go. We take a seat at our table and buy in for $500, that's the max. All participants of the meetup game get this cool chip protector, courtesy of WPT. So that's pretty neat. Bellagio actually ups the normal 2-5 max from 500 up to 1,000 just for the meetup game. The power of vloggers and their fans. That's us, guys. So into the actual game, some time goes by before I get to play a decent hand. We lose a few small pots, but nothing of note. The first hand of note, we have king-queen suited in the small blind. There is an open from under the gun to 15 with one caller. I look down at king-queen of clubs, and knowing I'll be playing this in a position, I raise it up to $50. The initial raiser folds, but middle position flats. The flop comes, two of spades, eight of diamonds, 10 of hearts. I down bet and put out what I want to look like a value sizing of about one third pot, $35. Our opponent thinks for a little while and raises to 135. After a double flat call, then this raise on such a disconnected board, it seems pretty apparent I've run face first into a set. So I fold instantly. No need wasting more time on this one. The next interesting hand, we look down at pocket queens in the cutoff. I look down at a premium here and I am pretty excited to finally get to play a good hand. I open $25 and get called by just a small blind. We're heads up to a flop of jack, seven, four, rainbow. Checks to me and I continue for $30. Small blind raises to 70. Pretty small raise here. Not sure what my opponent is doing this with. Two pair would be a really weird on this board, so that seems unlikely. It could be a set. Uh, I may check raise a set here, but to a larger size, I would expect to only get a call from jacks or better. When I'm not sure exactly what my opponent could be doing this with, I'm certainly going to be putting money in here with a hand as strong as queens. I make the call. Turn comes the three of diamonds. Small blind slows down and checks, and I check back to evaluate a river. The river comes the nine of diamonds. When the small blind checks again, I decided safe to go for some value here. The only draw that got there was 10-8, with no flush draw out there at any point. I don't really see 10-8 check raising the flop, then slowing down on the turn, so I bet out $100. Small blind pretty quickly announces all in for 300 total. It's another 200 to me, and I really hate this spot, but still can't really put my opponent on a hand here. It's possible I ran into a set, jacks, sevens, fours. I would have thought that a set would lead the river though and not check to me after I check back the turn. This could be a hand like ace jack, but I'm not really sure what else. I don't see many bluffs here as missed straights would likely have pairs when the nine hits on the river and that's decent showdown value. So I don't like the idea of calling, but Queens seems too strong to lay down in this situation. So I make the call and get shown pocket nines. So yeah, we ran face first into a set. This session is off to a rough start. At this point, I add on for another 500, uh, so I'm in for a total of 1500 on the day. In the next interesting hand, we have pocket nines in the small blind. Now it's our turn to take pocket nines for a spin. There's an open to $20 from middle position, a call from the button, and we make the call as well. The flop comes four, queen, five, two spades. I check and it checks around. The turn comes the two of clubs. Now I lead out for $20 and only middle position makes the call. This is a fairly aggressive older gentleman who has been putting fairly large sizes out there on a regular basis thus far today. Because of his play style, I'm a little skeptical that he has anything in this situation. We're off to a river and it brings the eight of spades. 
car that doesn't really change much. I check, as second pair should be good a good amount of the time here. He thinks a few moments before putting out $100. A full pot size bet does not make a ton of sense to me here. Did we run into another set? This guy's been very aggressive though, so I ponder for a minute, but eventually I do make the call. We hear the best two words in all of poker, good call. And he shows down pocket threes. I table the nines and take it down. We are on the road to recovery. In the next interesting one, I have ace five suited under the gun. I open here to $20 and see five callers. No respect for the under the gun open I see. Honestly, I think even the dealer calls. We're 87 ways to a flop, but it's a pretty good one. Nine, ace, two, rainbow. I check as half the room is in on this hand. Middle position puts out a $40 bet and it folds to me. With top pair and some backdoor draws, it's a pretty easy call here. The turn is a beauty and brings the ace of clubs. I check and flow and he checks back. At this point, I feel pretty confident we have the best hand as a better ace would likely continue. River comes the eight of clubs. I put out a smaller sizing of $60 just trying to get a crying call from a nine or medium pocket pair. And we see the worst thing in all of poker, a min raise on the river to $120. This is just never a bluff, but there's no way I can fold this hand for such a small price. I sigh and prepare to light an additional $60 on fire. As soon as I make the call, we get shown the bad news. Our opponent tables ace jack and we are crushed. The check back on the turn really got us good this time. In the next interesting hand, there's an early position open to $15 and a call from the hijack. I look down at eight four off on the button. Now you may be wondering why this hand is being included. And to be honest, I wish I had a solid logic based reason to give you. However, the early position raiser is the same opponent that wrecked our world in the previous hand with ace jack. And I'm simply out for revenge in this one. In position, I raise to $45. Unfortunately, our target, the opener, folds and only the hijack calls. Damn. Well, Mr. Hijack, you've unknowingly volunteered as tribute. The flop comes ace, ace, king. And that is significantly better for our bluffing range than our opponent's calling range. That's how this works, right? He checks to me and I continue for a half pot size of $50. He folds pretty quickly and we get back the $60 we lit on fire in the last hand. Revenge at its best. In the next one, this is the only hand I end up playing heads up against Brad while he was at my table. I actually didn't get any footage of him as he came to sit down and I didn't want to get people's faces in the vlog. That was the one rule Bellagio had for recording was that you can't get other people's faces in. So you'll have to take my word that the hand you see on the table is in fact Brad's. Brad opens the $15 from middle position and I call out of the big blind with queen 10 off. We're heads up to a flop of queen nine three, two hearts. We both quickly check. The turn brings the eight of spades. This card does not help us at all and completes jack 10 for a straight. So I still don't see a reason to bet. I check. Brad puts out $20. This seems reasonable with top pair and I make the call. The river is a six of hearts. Front door hearts come in, more straights get there, and I begin to form my evil plan. All right, this is a great spot to pull a move on the man himself. I don't wanna lead and just get a fold. Plus, if Brad checks back, top pair may still be good. So I check with intentions to check raise anything Brad may put out there. Unfortunately, Brad checks back and turns over queen 10. We end up chopping this one. And since we had the same hand, that means we're equally as good, right? Yeah, let's go with that. Equally as good. This hand, I unfortunately missed recording as there was a small work emergency I had to take care of. And as a result, I was unable to record for a little bit. Luckily, there was only one big hand during that time. My buddy Brian, who had a royal flush in the last vlog, snapped this pick of me, which we found pretty funny, since a normal person would simply have stepped away from the table for a bit. I, of course, chose to do both at the same time. Anyway, we look down at pocket queens under the gun plus one. Under the gun opens to 15. I'm a bit short stacked at this point and only have about $515 left in front of me. At this point in the session, aside from having to work, I'm honestly mentally in a pretty bad place. I came here to have fun, to meet Brad and Andrew. Instead, I'm going through some tough personal stuff off the felt and getting crushed on the felt. I could really use something to go my way. I raise it up to $40. Folds back around to under the gun who makes the call. This guy and I have battled a bunch today and he has gotten the better of me to this point. The flop comes out, ace, deuce, deuce, rainbow. He checks and I check back since his under the gun open range is going to contain a lot of strong aces. Turn is the three of diamonds. 
Under the Gun now leads for 60. I make the calls that seems like a pretty reasonable price. The river is the miracle queen of clubs. And to make it even better, Under the Gun now leads for $125. Finally, this is the stuff dreams are made of. I have about $415 left in my stack. There's 325 in the middle. And if I jam, it'll be less than 300 for him to call into a pot of over $740. It'll be hard for a strong ace to fold here, which is what I suspect we're up against. Don't think he'll put me on a two based on the preflop action. The only hands that are really plausible containing a two would be ace two suited or pocket twos. Since I think he has an ace, and flopping quads, I've heard, is hard, I think he'll call us here with almost all of his hands containing a strong ace. After a few moments, I announce all in. He tanks for quite a while. Sort of glad I don't have to edit the footage, to be honest, from how long it was. He says out loud, it's just so small of an all in. How can I fold? How indeed, sir. Please put it in. That's what she said. He eventually puts in the call and we show the winner. He flashes an ace and says a few things my mother told me not to repeat and mucks. Very happy to suck out on the river in this one against a guy who we've been bleeding chips to for the last couple hours. This double up was sorely needed as we were down to only a little over 500 in our stack. Now we have over a thousand and are ready to keep battling back. Shortly after the last hand, our table breaks, and I move to a table that looks like a ton of action with a lot of big stacks. Unfortunately, we are card dead for a little while till we look down at ace-king on the button. There's a middle position open to 25, the cutoff calls, and I raise it to $75. The small blind cold calls, which is interesting. Middle position, the original raiser actually folds, and the cutoff makes the call. We're three ways to a flop of king, eight, deuce, two spades. Not bad for ace king on the button. Small blind checks. The cutoff, who seems like a strong player, takes the lead and bets out 70. That's a very interesting bet. The pot has $250 in it. He double called, first the 25, then my $75 raise preflop, and now is leading rather than check and play and flow. I don't believe this bet at all. To be honest, it feels like a blocker bet. I like to put in a raise here to 145. In hindsight, I wish I had made it bigger, more like 200, but I still like the overall play. Small blind thinks for a bit and calls. This is a little concerning as the cutoff and I have shown a ton of strength. The cutoff eventually agrees with my assessment of the small blind and actually folds. The turn comes the five of spades. I don't love this card as it brings spades in and that could very well be what the small blind is on. When he checks to me though, I'm not letting up on the gas and giving him a free river. I bet out $200. Small blind thinks for a while, looks very uncomfortable, but eventually puts in the call. At this point, I think I'm done putting more money in this pot. It's ballooned up to a little over $1,000 and all I have is one pair. I run into multiple sets in situations like this today and have some PTSD, but the fact that he's just called each street and never raised makes me feel like he's on a draw and doesn't have a made hand just yet. I can't imagine playing a set this way out of position. The river comes the five of hearts. If a small blind jams, I will be sick to my stomach. Small blind thinks for a little bit, but eventually checks it over to me. I am perfectly happy to check it back and take my ace king to showdown. He turns over king, queen with the king of spades. What an amazing run out for our hand in this one. I do wish I had gone a little bigger on the flop raise and the turn bets knowing his exact holding. He certainly wasn't going anywhere, but I am more than happy to take down another big win. In the last interesting hand of this one, we look down at pocket threes in the small blind, three of spades, three of diamonds. There was a middle position open preflop to 15. Both myself and the big blind come along for the ride. The flop comes out, jack, queen, three, beautiful. It checks the middle position who makes it 25 to go. This is a pretty wet board with a lot of draws out there, so I pop it up right away to $75. Big blind folds, middle position thinks for a little while and makes the call. The turn comes the five of clubs. Playing out of position here is tough because I don't want this to check through, but the clubs do come in. I think about what sizing to go with and decide to go just over half pot. I lead out for 125. Middle position looks like he's unsure but wants to make a bad decision. I'm really hoping for a call and a clean river to send in the bomb squad and go nuclear. He begins assembling chips. I'm getting excited. But apparently there must have been a huge sale at the Break Josh's Heart store this week, and this guy is a bargain shopper. He eventually finds the fold. That, that sale would explain a lot, actually. We rake in one last pot to complete a solid comeback after being buried in this one and are more than happy to end the day on a good note. Thank you.
That's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Sucked out there with Pocket Queens in a spot where we really needed it, but it kind of makes up for earlier getting sucked out on with Pocket Queens in the hand against Pocket Nines. And as promised, upcoming now is my interview with Andrew Nimi, such a nice guy. If you guys ever have the opportunity to attend a meetup game or to play with Brad or Andrew, I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, they are the absolute best. Throw a like, throw a subscribe in there, helps me out a ton. Actually in Atlantic City right now at Borgata, it is Thanksgiving. Uh, had a great meal with my family earlier tonight. Numbers here from the session. I was uh, in for 1500, out for 17 and change. Not a huge win, but hey, it's better than a loss. We'll take that 10 times out of 10. So again, thank you guys so much. Like, subscribe, and see you on the next one. Hey, here with Andrew Nimi, the OG. Uh, just got done playing the Brad Owen and Andrew Nimi meetup game. Andrew, thank you for taking the time to chat with me real quick. I just wanted to ask you, for someone like me, who would love to get into what's rapidly becoming a saturated space, uh, small fish, big pond, any advice you'd have or anything you'd recommend? As far as poker logging goes, yes, poker logging yes. itself. Uh, I think that there's always room for additional personalities and unique personalities. And I think that if you're bringing something unique to the table, then that's going to be interesting. But I also think that, you know, it depends on what your motivations are. Like if you're trying to grow an audience, then that's good advice. If you are less interested in growing an audience and you just want to view content creation as a personal journal type of thing, which is a very, very good reason to start making content, yeah. then it doesn't really matter. You know, you just be yourself and you do your thing. You'll have something to look back on in 10 years from now and your your family can look back on it 10 years from now and, and see what you're up to. So, you know, there's all sorts of reasons to do things, you know, as far as content goes. So you'd say more to like lean into, like be, just be more of a personality, right? Like be who you are and, and try to... Uh, I always tell people that they should make the videos that they would want to watch, you know? Like, I like that, yeah. If, if, uh, if you're just copying someone else's style, then it's probably not going to be that interesting to you because that thing is already out there and you can just watch that person's videos. But if like there's something out there that you have in mind that someone's that nobody's doing that uh, you feel like you could create and that you would want to watch yourself, then I think that could be definitely something that's interesting. You know, Andrew, thank you so much for your time. I, I really appreciate it. I don't want to give you a left-handed handshake because it would be unlucky. So oh, good. So they say. I'm left-handed. So what are you? So Did not. Okay. Okay. Whatever, whatever okay. You want to do. I, I can tell you have a much stronger left-handed grip than I do. For sure. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah.